So this is what you do like necks on and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I do necks. I do the pocketing on the on the, uh, the tops. Like this board down here, which is covered with uh, sawdust right now, I put a vacuum on that and that holds the the, uh, the top in place. And when I when I first put that in place, I I uh, plane it with a big bit like this one first, so that it is exactly in plane with the bit when it's going to cut. So it just lets you be pretty much incredibly consistent. Yes. Yes. And when I do that, though, I want to do more than one top. Yeah. Because it's a big setup. You yeah. Know? And uh, I also cut my cut the circles for my rosettes and the sound holes and the shape. Yeah. I have a consistent shape then that I use. I've also made my work boards on it, mm -hmm. um, the mold, the outside molds on it. And, and I imagine too, if you're gonna do like your neck shape and everything like that, yeah, if you're that consistent, is very consistent, and if you have someone that you know likes the way one of your guitars plays, yeah. and I also make the, the fingerboards on this, like I was telling you about the compound yeah. the radius and the relief. Um, it goes on to a goes onto a board that you know holds it in place. Um, I also do the uh, the bridges. I make the bridges on it. There's a this goes on. This goes on instead of the neck, and then the bridge is sucked on there with the with the vacuum, and it, it's held in place very very firmly. If you tried to pull the bridge off, you wouldn't be able to get it off. Yeah. And. Um, so that makes life a whole lot easier too. But you know, when you first fire it up, it doesn't know where it is, and it's got these limit switches. That so, what you do is you reference it home, and then it, it hits the switch and backs off a little bit. Hits the switch, backs off. Hits the switch, and now that's uh, at what's called machine zero. Then you have um, coordinates for the various fixtures that you have on. So like for the neck, zero is right at the um, plane at the top of the, of the neck where the fingerboard glues to, the middle of the 12th fret at the 12th fret. So zero, 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 X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And you, you have a, a chart that, um, so like G55, which is a code that the machine reads, is offset 158.52303.41 That puts it when when uh, you say go to zero when you've got that in, it won't go over right there. So it's kind of amazing, you know, because this is putting like an incredible amount of consistency in your hands. Oh yeah, yeah. And it also frees you up then to do the stuff that is important. Yeah. So I will put in G55 uh, fixture, and then I will put in the code that says G0 means go where I'm going to tell you to go as fast as you can. And then I'll say go to X0, Y0. And then go over to the 12th fret. Nice. In the middle of the 12th fret. But what you have is a G code file that it reads. So I have a rough cut file, which I use that bit with, which takes the block of wood, which is I cut it down more than this, but this is this is the starting point for that. Mm -hmm. um, I cut, you know, so it doesn't have to cut quite so much stuff put the slots in for the sides and everything. But then the rough um, the rough cut will remove wood that is not part of the surface. After you've done that, then you run the finish and it only cuts the surface. It stays on the surface. So if you didn't do the rough first, you'd be hogging off a lot of wood. All at once. Fine yeah. and, and it is going to, you know, it wouldn't work. Um, so once you have your program, you just load this file and it cuts the neck for you? Yep. That's awesome. And uh, so like, 
this is what is G code right here, and this is the uh, this is the file, and all these G's mean something. And when you're cutting, when you're cutting uh, curvatures, complex curvatures like for a net, it is all done in straight lines, straight line segments. And depending on how fine you want the cut to be made, like you'll tell them the the program that you use to generate this. I only want the um, variation from the service like maybe a tenth of a millimeter or um, half a tenth of a millimeter, five, uh, th um, five thousandths of a millimeter. The, the finer you want that to be, the shorter those line segments will be and the longer the file will be. So you can, you know, you can kind of say I want it to be this fine. Now yeah. this machine is capable of one five hundredth of a millimeter of accuracy, but you would never use that. Yeah. You know? uh, so my step over for the finish on the neck is a half a millimeter. And so when it runs, you just uh, you just say start, and uh, I will hopefully everything is in place, and then the, and the router will start automatically, and I'll turn the router off. So it's just going through. That's awesome. Going through the, the motions to cut the cut all the, the waste wood away, and, and I can just walk away <laughs> and leave it. <laughs> and leave it, yeah. Sweet. And when it gets, you know, uh, there are the, the the it's called a CAM program, computer aided manufacturing, or um, and what it does is you use your modeling program, which is Wrangler 3D, to make your pattern. And then the CAM program reads the surface that you have created. And it, <clears throat> you can put all the parameters in, the size of your bit. Let's say you're using a bit that's uh, half inch diameter. Uh, you will put in that it is a half inch diameter bit into the CAM program, and that your zero point is on the tip. And it will do all the offsets that it needs to so that it cuts the shape that you, you want it to be at home. You know, yeah. dig into it, it will take into consideration the radius of that bit. And uh, you couldn't do that by hand, you couldn't code that by hand. But I have the basic version of the CAM program which generates this G code, which is $1,000. Mm -hmm. It only does X, Y, and Z. I have a fourth axis, and I have a rotational axis which rotates the net. If I wanted to have it so that it would generate the G-code automatically, that's another thousand dollars for that plug -in. Yeah. Um, what I do is I, I take my model and I rotate it so that it's on its left side and then I generate the G-code for the one half of it and then I generate the G-code for the other half of it and then uh, I just stick them together. I have this one here and I have this one here and in the middle of it, I just say uh, G0 A, um, A90 and it rotates in and reads before it goes and cuts the other. Uh, G code is a text file. Yeah. And, and all you do is just, if you know the G code that you want, you can write it. In fact, for the bridge, I did it all, I coded it all by hand because it's mostly straight lines, but a neck is just way too, way too, too complex. complex. So you do have to, you know, I, I could just say, okay, I'll just write it on paper where I want it to go. And like basically for the neck on the, on the wings of it, it just rotates back and forth and, and the bit just moves as it's rotating back and forth. And that's really easy to, 